Welcome, fellow pilgrims, to our sacred journey on planning a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Kittery Tekic with a YouTube video today. I'm Priscilla, and I invite you to join me on an extraordinary pilgrimage where we explore the rich traditions and spiritual treasures of the Catholic faith. In this sacred space, we delve into the depths of devotion, faith, and the power of prayer with a special focus on taking an inspiring Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Kittery Tekic with us. This channel is all about teaching you about the holy saints so that you can deepen your faith. I also help you plan your Catholic pilgrimages to visit these incredible saints and bring your faith to the next level, so make sure to check out the links in the description for help with cheap flights, car rentals, travel insurance, and more. This channel is about fostering a deeper understanding of our faith, embracing the teachings of Christ, and discovering the beauty of Catholic traditions. Today, we'll explore the exciting graces contained within a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Kateri Tekakwitha and her teachings and apply her lessons to our everyday lives. Together, we'll cultivate a space of spiritual growth where we can learn from one another, uplift each other, and find solace in planning a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Kateri Tekakwitha and our shared Catholic heritage. So, whether you're a seasoned devotee or just beginning your journey of faith, this channel is for you. Let's unite as a community of prayerful souls embarking on this divine pilgrimage of the heart. Join me on this journey today as we learn about how to plan a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Kateri Tekakwitha, where prayer becomes a transformative force and our souls find sanctuary. Take a moment now to subscribe to our channel because we have more awesome videos coming up and hit the notification bell to be a part of our sacred journey. Let's get started. How can I make a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Kateri Tekakwitha? Walking in the footsteps of our faith's giants like St. Kateri Tekakwitha renews inspiration on the journey. For those hoping to arrange a pilgrimage honoring Kateri, here are some tips. First, prayerfully choose dates flexible with other responsibilities, allowing several days to visit key sites. Budget wisely for lodging, food, transportation, etc. Many holy sites connected with Kateri's life are located in upstate New York and Canada. Her birthplace is near Orisville, in NY, Fonde, NY Her Baptismal Chapel, Conawake, Quebec, Shrine Over Her Grave, Other Mohawk Valley Locations She Lived, Research Thoroughly and Book Lodging Early As Pilgrim Demand Is High, Joining an Organized Group Tour May Ease Logistics, Make Sure Passports and Transportation Arrangements Are In Order Well Beforehand, Most Importantly, Prepare Spiritually By Studying Kateri's Holy Life And Bringing Intentions For Her Intercession, Approach The Pilgrimage As A Time Of Spiritual Enrichment, Not Just Sightseeing, Open Your Heart To The Great as God wants to grant at sacred places where Kateri walked. With planning and prayer, a grace-filled adventure awaits. What other saints are in Canada? Beyond St. Kateri Tekakwitha, Canada has numerous holy figures who leap to extraordinary spiritual heights in the wilderness. Let's take a quick look at a few key saints active in Canada. St. Marguerite Bergiais, French nun instrumental in Montreal's Catholic beginnings, founded the first school and convent there. St. André Bisset, known as a miraculous healer in Montreal, he promoted devotion to St. Joseph. St. Marie of the Incarnation, converted from Protestantism and established the Ursuline Order in Quebec, educating Native girls. St. Francois de Laval, the first Catholic bishop of what is now Canada, founded schools, hospitals, and seminaries. The Martyrs of North America, eight Jesuit missionaries were martyred preaching the faith in Canada, some alongside Native converts. Canada's wild spaces cradled explosive saints still lighting the darkness. These holy men and women modeled incredible courage, expanding Catholic presence amid daunting odds. Their lives speak powerfully to the majesty of God's work in hidden places. Someday I hope to undertake a pilgrimage through Canada's saintly geography, meeting these spiritual giants in their earthly home, making travel arrangements to see St. Kateri Tekakwitha. For busy moms like me, organizing a St. Kateri pilgrimage takes effort but promises profound fruits. Here are some pointers to smooth the planning. Pick flexible dates that work for your family's routine, possibly during summer or school breaks. Having several months to budget wisely and book reservations well in advance takes takes the pressure off last-minute planning. Research organized pilgrimage tours meeting your needs or design your own loose itinerary if traveling independently. Make sure passports, documentation, transportation, and lodging arrangements are settled ahead of time. Pack and prepare as much as possible beforehand so you focus on the pilgrimage itself. Read about Kateri's holy sites and legacy, build anticipation and spiritual intentions for her intercession. Most importantly, maintain an attitude of prayer and openness to divine guidance throughout the process. Then and trust God to bless this pilgrimage as an unforgettable gift strengthening your family's faith. I've been all over the place. America, Scotland, Korea, Hong Kong, Macau, the Vatican, Switzerland, France, Milan, and all of Israel are among the countries I've visited. Very soon, I'll be in Turkey. I am well versed in so many facets of travel. To 
assist you in getting ready for your vacation, I've posted a few straightforward tools for you to find cheap flights, car rentals, travel insurance and more so make sure you check those out in the description below. Time to pack your bags. Why does St. Kateri have a turtle? In images of St. Kateri Tekakwitha, a turtle often accompanies her as a symbol of spiritual qualities from native culture. Turtles represent wisdom, perseverance, connection to the earth, sturdiness amidst storms, and the ability to retreat inward for deep reflection, all strengths Kateri embodied. Kateri remained faithfully rooted in Catholic devotion despite trials, like a turtle drawing into its shell for safety. She cultivated stillness and contemplation. Though young, Kateri gained the spiritual depth of elders through prayer. Turtles also symbolize long life and longevity. Though only 24 at her death, Kateri's fervent spirituality seemed to transcend earthly limits. The well-worn turtle shell implies weathering earthly troubles through spiritual closeness to God. When we see Kateri pictured with her turtle companion, let us reflect on cultivating the spiritual gifts of our origins. May we endure trials steadfastly, pray introspectively, and gain the wisdom that comes from pondering divine truths in our hearts. Let us model ourselves after St. Kateri's humility, perseverance, and spiritual groundedness. What is St. Kateri Tekakwitha the patron saint of? St. Kateri watches over many significant causes reflecting her holy legacy as the Lily of the Mohawks. By studying her spiritual patronage, we uncover deeper dimensions of Kateri's sanctity. Firstly, Kateri is the patroness of native peoples indigenous to the Americas, upholding the dignity and gifts of her cultural heritage. She also oversees ecology and the environment, honoring her closeness to nature and the simplicity of life. Kateri patronizes those disfigured by illness, remembering her smallpox scars with empathy. Her patronage includes converts, reflecting her courage in baptism despite opposition. Additionally, Kateri watches over orphans, abuse victims, the rejected, sick, and disabled. She understands marginalization. This saint even oversees missionaries, continuing the evangelization she supported in her lifetime. Above all, Kateri Tekakwitha represents holiness bursting forth in unexpected soil. Her care and wisdom touch all who feel outcast, vulnerable, or working with the neglected. She gently reconciles souls to Christ, spreading the good news tenderly but persistently. Saint Kateri draws people to the foot of the cross in all their brokenness. No one lies beyond the reach of her compassion. This remarkable saint keeps opening up access to God's grace. Wherever we experience isolation or trials in faith, Kateri is a trusted guide lighting the swift path back to God's heart. She knew the pains of earthly exile and the joys of spiritual homecoming. As her patron, may she lead many more souls to share in that timeless bliss. How can praying the St. Kateri Tekak with a prayer help me to become a saint? The Church encourages all baptized Christians to pursue sainthood by modeling heroic virtue. Praying to St. Kateri aids this journey in beautiful ways. Firstly, Kateri's exemplary devotion to prayer despite distractions teaches us to treasure intimacy with God. Her faith was built on the bedrock of constant prayer. Kateri models orienting all life's moments toward Christ. Through Kateri's sacrificial spirit and penitential practices, she inspires us to reform selfish tendencies for greater love. Her voluntary mortifications aimed at unlocking deeper grace, detachment, and humility. Kateri's sacrifices can melt our hearts for God. We glimpse facets of sanctity in Kateri's perseverance amidst trials, courage defending her faith, charity, and lifelong dedicated service. Whatever opposes holiness, the St. Kateri Tekak with a prayer helps us remain undaunted on the path Christ chose for us. Most importantly, each St. Kateri Tekak with a prayer renews our belief that with God, sainthood lies within every heart open to grace. By frequently calling on Kateri and the saints, we plant our feet firmly on the narrow way that leads to heaven. With holy friends like Kateri guiding our steps, the impossible becomes possible. Prayer is such an important aspect of growing in your faith. Also, meditating on the gospel for at least a few minutes a day can dramatically deepen your faith. Are you familiar with the gospel? I believe that you were brought to this video today for a reason. Let's take a moment to think about the gospel and what the religion of Christianity is all about. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that we all need a savior because of this. Romans 3.23 Because of this, God sent his one and only son to us to be the atonement for our sins. As it says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, in Malachi, Malachi 3 to 6 God says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. He has always required a blood sacrifice for the atonement of sins. He says this in Leviticus 17 11, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. 
He also repeats this in the New Testament when he says in Hebrews 9.22, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is why Jesus, God in the flesh, had to come into the world and live under the law, which are the Ten Commandments, to redeem those who were under the law. Have you obeyed the entire law of the Lord? Have you ever stolen anything, even if it was small? Have you ever lied? Have you ever not kept Sunday as a day of rest and worship of the Lord? Have you ever looked with lust at another person that you were not married to or done physical things with a person you were not married to? Have you ever desired something that your friend or neighbor had that didn't belong to you? To be honest, it's easy to break these laws because our nature is inclined to sin. The Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1-8 to minutes. 9. Because God loves us so much, in Isaiah 53, 10, it says, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush Jesus, when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. He conquered sin and death, and because he rose from the dead, he promises to raise us from the dead after we die too. This is the glorious gospel. The next step after a person has received the gospel is to go to RCIA at your local Catholic church. You can search for the nearest church on Google and call them to see when the next classes start. If they don't start for some months, you can still meet with the director and get some books to read to tie you over before it starts. I will be praying for you about all of this. This is the road to eternal life. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other videos about inspiring saints. I appreciate you taking the time to view this video. Make sure to check out the links below in the description so you can grab your St. Kateri Tekak with a Catholic t-shirt and be a part of our We Are Saintly Catholic community by signing up for our email list and joining us on Patreon. I give you free saint printables each month, a free We Are Saintly shirt each year, shoutouts, and more in Patreon as a special thank you for being a part of this amazing Catholic community. Are you considering taking a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Kateri Tekakwitha after learning about this Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Kateri Tekakwitha. I've traveled to lots of places, and I'm well versed in the things you may need along the way, so I've compiled a list of links in the description below where you can find cheap flights, car rentals, destination packages, and more. Save this video so you have those links handy and visit our blog to learn about more holy saints that will ignite your faith. I sincerely hope that thinking about and learning about this Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Kateri Tekakwitha has brought you a sense of comfort and tranquility. If you found this video to be beneficial, please do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel. Always remember to keep the faith and believe in the power of prayer. May God bless you and provide you with guidance on your journey. Until we meet again, take care of yourself, keep going to church, reading your Bible, praying your rosary, and sharing the gospel. I'm praying for you.